Hey there, artists, musicians, and busy creative professionals. How would you like to outsource your nagging to-do list? You should call Vicky at My Virtual Gal, virtual assistants to handle those things keeping you from your craft. Booking appointments, managing emails, tallying numbers, or editing your business blog, My Virtual Gal can handle it all. Short term or long, daily, weekly, or monthly. Check out MyVirtualGal.com to book your free discovery call and explore the possibilities. You'll be amazed how productive you'll feel with a right-hand gal, my virtual gal. Welcome to Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico. I'm your host, Steve Ricardo. We have a very, very special show for you today. My old friend James McAndrew from Milk Toast and Company will be joining us shortly from Denver via cell phone. As if that's not enough, we have here in the studio the beautiful and talented, coolest fashion designer in Boston history and Syracuse University graduate. I had to throw that in. Sibylline Siriano. Hello, Steve. How are you? (laughs) I'm excellent. How are you? Good. We haven't seen each other in a while. It's, I don't know. How long has it been? Um... Maybe 10 I'm, years. I'm thinking 10 years. Yeah. Now, um, when I lived in Davis Square, you had a store in Davis Square, and that's when we met. Sibylline was Sibylline the name of the, the store. Boutique. Yeah. You later moved on to Charles Street in Boston, a little fancier neighborhood. Although Davis Square, you know, it's pretty hip. It was area. hip. It was hip. It was the uh, Brooklyn, if you will, of Manhattan. <laughs> That's good. You I know, like that. That was why I picked it. I Absolutely. like that very yeah. much. Yeah. Um, you designed some dresses for Ellie V from The Charms, who does the theme song for our show, by the way, which you didn't just hear. But when you listen to the show, you will hear it. I know it. Yes. Um, and then we just became friends. And I used to just come down there, hang around. And when you had events, I would drink all the wine and, you know, have fun. <laughs> drink all the wine, flirt with all the girls. Yeah. That's, you know. That that's sounds, Steve. That sounds about right. <laughs> I tried coming to see you a few times on Charles Street, but it seemed like I always missed you because you became too big of a fashion designer to hang out at the <laughs> retail location. <laughs> Well, I don't know how we always missed each other because I was always there nonstop. But that was my Charles Street uh, in Beacon Hill boutique. Yeah. And it was like, you know, going to the big, big leagues, you know, when I uh, moved down to Boston. So how long did you have both of those locations for? Total, it was 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. 2002. um, May is when I took the lease in Davis Square. And then I moved. um, I was there for six years. And then I moved into Boston in 2008. And I decided to hang that hat um, in 2012. And you did, you've been doing consulting and stuff. A ton of freelance design, um, working as event management um, for restaurants and wedding venues and that sort of thing. Events has always kind of been in my blood, too, and I feel like it comes hand in hand. But, um, yeah, just kind of done a bunch of stuff since my daughter was born and... Josie. Yeah. Josie. I dude. love that LEV and you both have daughters named what Josie. What is the chance of that? And <laughs> like, they're not any anything else other than Josie's. And they right? both are drummers. That yes. is yes. fast. Nick's a drummer, so he'll love that. <laughs> yes. Totally. I mean, when I, when you told me that Josie was a drummer too, because I've seen Ellie's Josie play drums, I was like, 
That is bizarre. I mean, how did they plan this? Out, and out you of, did it. And they're both blonde, and they're both tall, and they both have blue eyes. Like, I feel like once we finally get these kids together, they're going to be like two peas in a pod. It'll be really I, cool. I can't, wait. I can't wait for that. So now you're making a different move. You're opening an art gallery in the South End. Why don't you tell us all about that? Yeah. It's in this... honor of your dad, John. Jean, Jean, Jean Sariano. Sariano. Yes, yes. Um... So this is this is just something I've known I was going to do since I was literally knee high to a grasshopper since I was like a kid. Um, my dad is a very dynamic personality. And I say that um, with a lot of love. But there's a <laughs> lot of, uh, you know, tumultuous stuff. There He's an too. artist. <laughs> he is an artist. He is uh, like a little Picasso is what they call him. But, um, you know, I, you know, I've always I've known I also wanted to be a fashion designer since I can remember. So um, this was something for me that, um, you know, my dad has been painting since I was born. Um, he was in Manhattan. He was doing, you know, he was rolling with uh, Warhol and really? uh, absolutely Warhol, um, Keith Haring. Nice. Uh, what are all the all those other contemporary artists in Manhattan? And um, he just always seemed to ruin relationships with dealers and gallerists and and that sort of thing. And not not so much. I mean, it's just a shady. It can be a shady industry. It was certainly in the eighties. So I don't know. At some point in high school, I remember thinking, I have to represent my father someday. I have to make this happen for him because he's so incredibly talented and prolific. And this was something I've always had on the back burner. And then after doing my own career for 10 years, I started thinking, how am I going to get this going? I started co collecting paintings. And this all just happened, it feels like overnight, because November, I decided to possibly do um, like a pop-up gallery was my first idea. And when I started looking into pop-up galleries, it turned out, as you can imagine, there's so many spaces available right now. I was looking on Charles like, Street. Like right out in the hallway here. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, there's just, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people have to have had to close during the pandemic. Yeah, it's but a bummer. I, I also see that as an opportunity. I mean, those of us that are, I, I could call myself a serial entrepreneur at this stage because I've done so much. But um, I think... At this point, um, you know, I was like, hey, I got to take an opportunity when I when I get it. So Charles Street started looking into spaces there. There were about 10 spaces in November. Um, the prices there on Charles Street were quite high. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, but actually low for Charles Street, as you can imagine. So um, I wrote a business plan. In writing my business plan, I realized that my competitor was SOA Art District. And I'm like why am I looking on Charles Street when SOA has just a community of gallerists already? And I Which contacted... Which for people that are not from Boston, that's like the south end pretty much much of Boston, right? It's the right? south end of Boston. Yeah. It's right on Harrison Avenue. Um, there were six spaces at the time I was looking in December, and I nabbed one of the biggest spaces. It's 1,500 square, wow. square feet. It's in the 460C building of Harrison Avenue. So there's a, just a vibrant art community going on down there. And with the SOA open market and the food trucks and all that sort of stuff that I think we all have to believe is coming back now, you yeah. know, and now yeah, that we've we kind of, you know, reached this place in the pandemic, I think, you know, there'll, there'll be a lot more life coming back to it. So... Uh, I know you have a couple of soft openings yes. planned. Uh, what's the story with those? So April, um, Friday, April 2nd is the first Friday of SOA Art District down there. Mm -hmm. And that will be my first exhibit, my soft opening, if you will. And uh, we will be open from 12 to 4 and then 5 to 9 that evening, that day all day Friday. And then our Saturday is going to be Saturday, April 3rd. And that will be from 12 to 5. And people have to reserve spots. Ideally, we would prefer people to reserve How spots. How would they do that? Eventbrite has um, our invitation on there. And okay. you can go on to Eventbrite. If you search Crowd Me, I'm Alone or Sibylline the Art Gallery, spelled C-I-B-E-L-I-N-E, um, or Jean Sariano, Jean Sariano, um, you can find the ticket slots. 
And we're doing it for the COVID purpose. We can have 15 people in the gallery at any given, you know, time slot. So. Great. And the violin cat is playing yes. the, the matinee. Yes, she Who's is. a great violinist from Worcester. Thanks to you. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk we'll talk a little bit more about that uh at after we talk to James. Um but before we bring James McAndrew from Milk Toast and Company on the show, let's listen to the song Cigarette Burns, which is a new single that he just released. And the video is on YouTube, and it's just an absolutely fantastic video and a fantastic song. Right, so um, that was Cigarette Burns by Milk Toast and Company that you just heard. And please welcome to the Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico podcast, my very good friend. I have two good friends on today. It's a good day. James McAndrew. How you doing, James? I am doing great. You're in Denver. On this fine Wednesday. You're in Denver, as we say in Boston, Denver, Colorado. Denver. <laughs> Say hello to... In the land I never thought I'd be in. Yeah, I'm going to ask you how you got there. But please say hello to Sibylline Seriano. I know you guys haven't met, but I think if you oh, did... Sibylline, how are you? Hello, James. How are you? I think if Very you, good. I think Very if you fun. guys did meet each other, you would definitely connect. Because... Yeah, I'm going to talk to you about your style. <laughs> for sure. About fashion? About fashion. 
My secret passion. Oh, even Ooh, better. I like that. I like that. Even better. I always say mm. that too, except it's not a secret for me. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get to that that point, James, can we just talk about, uh, you know, you grew up, uh, we, we talked about that you've lived in a lot of places in Mass, but you said Dorchester was kind of like your, uh, your longest. I lived there the longest. Dorchester. So... Dorchester. Did you buy uh, your your pack? Did you go to the packy on Zad Ave? <laughs> <laughs> go to the Banshee. <laughs> we used to drink at the Banshee all the time. Sibylline's not originally from Massachusetts, so she's giving us a hard time, obviously, about our <laughs> accents. Well, I I can hear because she can't not pronounce her eyes correctly. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm I'm from uh, Manhattan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were talking about this last night. We were both brought up Catholic in Massachusetts, which explains a lot about our existence. Would you say that you had like a rough upbringing when you were growing up here, James? Uh, kind of, as I was joking, um, I wasn't flogged on a on a daily and or weekly basis. <sighs> Not really. I mean, I, I, I fought a lot. You fought um, a lot. <laughs> How can you not get in fights? Middle school, um, <laughs> there's a lot of fighting. Um, but um, yeah, I, I had a great a single mom and four sisters. Wow! Um, oh my god! Very loving, phenomenal human beings. I came from a single mom as well. There you go. That, that many siblings? No, I'm an only, actually. But oh, you're an only, oh. Yeah, but I'm not the yeah, typical no. only. But I mean, you know what? If you have four sisters, you understand the female, don't he you? He knows the deal. <laughs> <laughs> you no, must. I'm still 100% confused. <laughs> more, no, inf- okay. more information doesn't mean more education. So <laughs> you, well, doesn't exactly equate that way. When did you start music, uh, James? Because we'll get to how we met, because we met when you were 18 years old, and I was a couple years older than you. But how did, when and how did you start playing? I was six. Wow. Um, as a matter of fact, my, my aunt had a piano in Revere. Yeah, sorry, excuse me, Revia. Revia. Um, see, I wanted to sound smart, so eventually I started <laughs> pronouncing my eyes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, about six years old, she would just, I mean, it was a smaller house, but I would just bang away on that thing, making quote-unquote songs. And uh, I'm sure it was 100% intolerable, but she was so phenomenal. Um, she was just, um, she totally just allowed me to, to do that while basically family was visiting that household and there was barely a door to close on the area where she had that piano. So, um, did she play the piano as well and teach you? Did Say she, it again. did she play the piano as well and teach you what she knew? No, no, not at all. Uh, there was actually pretty much no one in the family that really played music. One of my sisters took piano lessons for a minute. Um, and of course we couldn't afford a piano. So, um, eventually she actually let my sisters purchase the piano, uh, for super short money. It wasn't exactly a unbelievable piano by any stretch of the imagination so I could actually play um, and eventually take lessons at about 10 years old Um, and trying to read music was about as frustrating frustrating as it got and um, I ended up getting kicked out of piano lessons because I'd memorize the song and forget to flip the pages so you relied on um, your eventually. ears. Can can we talk about this? Because I played classical piano as well. And I, I've been joking with Steve that I have like um, a large, soulful, blues piano player stuck inside of me that can't come out yet because wow. of the fact that I grew up playing classical piano like stuck to the pages of, you know, what my teacher would make me learn and I, too, mm-hmm. just wanted to play by ear. I just wanted to, like, play, you know, abstract, whatever. I wanted to play blues. 
So I get it. It's it's yeah. like the you know the way we learned as kids was so you know you had to conform to this little plan that they had for you, right? Yeah, I mean, well, the idea it's two different languages that one of which I could never learn. I just it was too frustrating for me to tears. Uh the only thing I could read once I got into middle school was trumpet but that was only one note at a time I could figure that one out Hmm. um so but yeah theory you know folks that kind of it's kind of two different ways to speak that language um and it's rare uh that people are fluent in both um or can kind of get beyond the theory aspect of it um I, I remember very specifically so my teacher was uh, you know, he was a recent Berkeley grad, and I remember coming in saying, hey, I want to show you this song that I wrote, whatever it was. And uh, I had just hit a chord or a note or whatever it was, and he goes, well, how do you know that that's the right note? And that was the most bizarre question I think I've ever been asked <laughs> to date. Yeah. Um in terms of making any music whatsoever. What do you mean, how does that, why, what do you mean that note, how do I know? Because it sounds good. I would, I would, har- I would hardly, knowing you for as long as I have, I would hardly uh, describe you as someone that went by the book. <laughs> you know, because by the time I met you, I believe you were playing guitar, correct? In, in 1999, when I came to see the band. Yeah, yeah, I started... <laughs> I started guitar, I think, I think I was 15, so I think I did, what, sophomore in high school or something like that? Right. Which prior to that, I thought that that instrument was impossible to play until someone taught me how to play a power chord, and and there it went from there. And then just started making chords up um, as my fingers would allow. So if, as a matter of fact, if you look how I... Not to get way, I I will go in seven thousand directions in this conversation if you let me. So I might want to keep me on track. But I'm going to try to. <laughs> you see my my fingers holding a cord now. It looks like I have horrific arthritis in my left hand. Um, I I don't do anything conventionally at all, and not because I'm anywhere near special. It's just that's give somebody an instrument you want to make sounds out of it and you don't have lessons or anybody to teach you how to do it you just make it so i I, you know i wanted to make that sound being unconventional makes sense because we met in a very unconventional way well maybe it was conventional but i love the way you told the story when we talked on the phone how we met because you kind of refresh my memory all i remembered was i went to a a bar in Everett that was definitely a mob run bar. <laughs> and I was with Chili <laughs> I was with Chili Kurtz and Devin Irish. Why don't you tell that story? How did you get me to come check you out in Everett? Yeah, it's it's a pretty good one. <laughs> um so that was a high school band. We had graduated, so that was the summer after I graduated. And, you know, as far as we were concerned, the band was done. It was a high school band. We're all going to college or, um, I was eking my way through art school, um, or going in, but, uh, I had sent you, it was Twisted Rico Records, I believe. And I had sent you a demo and like weeks prior. And I just so happened to call call you and say and and told you like listen I, I sent you this demo and you said all right it's, as a matter of fact i see it here i think he's had it on the floor like well i see it here on the floor and you called me like five minutes later super excited which made me in turn also super excited because uh, i was just praying for just the shot and uh we set up that show very impromptu kind of hence the Odd mob run, mob front <laughs> bar. It was kind of a scary uh, we place. Just forced the show <laughs> so you you and you could come see it. And um, we had two sets, or I think we just had one long set, and we split it in two. 
and it just so happened it was the worst set we could have possibly imagined oh, no. everything broke all the amps <laughs> were destroyed i mean we had no money so all the amps are garbage uh certainly not well taken care of my guitar was breaking i only had one and by i will call it intermission i went up to you with the only thing I could describe as a desperate, apologetic, please give us another chance face. And uh, you were very, you were nice about it. Um, oh, thank you. But uh, certainly not, <laughs> not exactly interested anymore. So were you so trying to get was, a record deal on this evening? I didn't. I was, of course. Yeah, okay. I was more of a management and booking. I had just started my management and booking company in Boston, like literally a couple of years before that. And I put a compilation out, the class, Twisted Rico class of 98. And that's what he gets the idea. I don't think it was... I never called it Twisted Rico Records, but it was just... Maybe it was Twisted Rico Records. I don't even remember. But uh, Well, at the end of the day, me not being very well versed in the business at all, um, you might as well have been Sony to me. <laughs> right. Um, because at least it was, a, it was a shot. I'm thinking, oh my God, we, I can actually play music for a living. This is going to be great. Because you guys uh, kind of had a... And all the, you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but you guys kind of had a Nirvana vibe going on, and that, oh my god, yeah, and that's yeah. that's why I got you know Chili and Devin to come with me. I said, hey, you guys want to come with me to Everett? It's not easy getting people to go to Everett, by the way. So wait, this is 1995, <laughs> and he's got a ver- 99, 1999, and he's got yeah, a Nirvana 99. vibe. Wow. Okay. I mean. <laughs> He was a little well. A lot of a lot of young kids around that time, even though Nirvana was like ninety two, I think they kind of broke. Yeah. A lot of kids oh, were into Nirvana huge. in the nineties. I mean, I was in college during Nirvana and, and you know Pearl Jam. I mean, it's like forget it. That was what everybody was listening to. But it didn't that work. Was, that was the shit. It it, yeah. did, it was an interesting place, and you and it, you. Were, I liked you. I liked you. But the f- weird thing about it is, we didn't see each other again for ten years, and then for ten years, yeah. And then then you I tracked had, me down again. <laughs> yeah, uh, you were booking, or you had, um, as I am saying this, how I remember it at the time. Uh, not how I know it is. Just I knew you were associated with something. I don't know what clicked aside from Tw- Twisted Rico must have been part of one of the conversations. So I had stopped playing music and then we were in some punk band after the fact. Um, the same, one of my oldest friends has been in almost every single band, no matter the genre you're pretty much at that point in every single one. So there's a punk band. And then I started writing this other stuff for this band that I wanted to name Milk Toast because I love the name or I love the word Milk Toast. Love it. And so we were kind of developing over, you know, probably from 05. So for four years, we were kind of developing as a revolving door of um, uh, band members. And we were pretty much, that was the lineup. So that's when we started playing, and I believe it was a can tab. Right, the and timing, we, the time. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I do that a lot, forgive me. Uh, <laughs> the, the timing was impeccable because I listened to your music, and I'm like, there's a total morphine vibe going on here. And it just so happens that the first show that I have downstairs at the can tab is Cage Teat, with Dana Cauley from Morphine playing Dana saxophone. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Your band's going to fit on this bill. And I put you on that bill, and I think Vulgarity opened, the band from Rhode Island. And the place was packed, and it was probably one of the best shows I had uh, put together. Because I hadn't booked clubs in a while, and I just started. I just moved back to Boston. I was in L.A. and Phoenix. And I, your tape came to me at a perfect time. And I remember at the show, you're like, will you introduce me to Dana Cauley? And I'm like, he's going to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. I was like, I was, I was awestruck. No two ways about it. 
um, I was, my dream was to have Dana on one of my records at one point, which not to put the fast forward to, but that did end up, ha- yes. did end up happening. Yes. That's the beauty of the whole uh, thing. You wanted to work with Dana Colley. You were in the right place at the right time. You played together, and then he played on your next record. That's 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 yeah. A- well, it was years. It was years later, though. Um, the 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 first piece. The, the here is the best part about that. I was like a giddy. Really, there's no way to really describe this. <laughs> other wow. than saying I was like a giddy little girl with a, with a crush. Of We've course. all been there, James. Of course. <laughs> and, um, or I mean, a giddy little child in general as, with a crush, um, to drop off demos for the next record we were going to record. So he goes, yeah, just drop it off. Here's my address. And it's so silly too. It's he's right right there in town. He's like, just drop it off. I was shaking when I when I dropped it off at the front door. And funny enough, all the other members of the band weren't super familiar with Morphe. Meanwhile, oh. I absolutely love them. Um, so uh, that was funny. So I, what ended up happening is I would go out, go over there every couple of weekends and we just go up into his attic and start recording just stupid shit amazing um or songs i was just working on so that was amazing can i tell you can i jump in here steve and say steve introduced me to you um so that i would know your music obviously for me being a guest on the show and what is the first thing I said? You said you mentioned morphine in this first sentence because there's definitely a, a similarity going on there. There's no question about there, it. There is and there there isn't. That song in particular is. Um, but cigarette burns point, is, again. Yeah, it's so there's so much shit now going on genre wise um, that you can kind of look at that as a really good thing. Um, or a difficult thing for uh, if we were shopping for labels, which we're very passive about it. But um, well, I uh, really love. Yeah, you're, you're a tool all over the place. I loved your video. I, I I absolutely, I just got such a kick out of that video. Like from the moment you guys come out of the doors, <laughs> each one of you in a separate room in your fantastic tuxes with the piping i mean nobody wears tuxes with piping anymore (laughs) let's talk about that i'm like whoa steve i'm like this guy knows his shit when it comes to fashion are you kidding this is exactly why i wanted you on this show (laughs) but before we get to that let me ask james one question because i want to know how in the world did you end up in denver because you were a long time boston guy really putting out records and working your ass off in Boston for years and then I moved away too because we're that we're kind of like we you know how we were talking about we both move a lot there's no doubt about it but then you ended up in Denver how did that all happen well it's such a thick story so um I'll, I'll keep it as 2015 was a really bad time in my life I hadn't been playing music for a while um, oh, oh, 2010, I think we was our last show of that iteration of that band. And, uh, we played actually at the Middle East and then we were done. We walked our miles and that was over. So a few years passed. Um, I was in a rough relationship and that went south and I just, I was, I was a mess in general. Not that I wasn't a, in a mess prior to that, but. Um, just life absolutely just fell apart. And, uh, I ended up living in my car, which was an 07 Toyota Yaris, no less, not exactly roomy. No. And, uh, yeah, during the worst winter Boston had ever seen. So throughout the evening, I'm just digging out my tailpipe so I don't die in the middle of the night. Um, and just, and still working. I didn't let on that I was still that I was homeless. I was showering at the Y and going to work and, um, but still writing music because why not? 
That's the um, best time to write, isn't it? And then an acquaintance of mine had made an introduction to the woman that I'm actually with. Um, we'll make no bones about it. She, she and I just started talking on the phone, um, and then that turned to daily. We were talking on the phone for hours on end, and I had just said, "Hey, listen, you know, I, I, you know, someone had said something about playing music, and I." Played some for her. she. She thought it was fantastic. She goes, "I've got this media company, but I really want to do a record label." And I said, "You're really not. You're not going to monetize that way. You probably want to get into licensing." And that was pretty much the start of that conversation. Um, somewhere right there, she goes, "Well, why don't you come out to Denver and help me run this thing?" I said, "All right." And very right in in that area, some very fortunate things happened to me in my life. Um, to put it plainly, I no longer needed to live in a yard, um, personally. And, um, so with that, I ended up out in, in Denver and the media company never took off whatsoever. Uh, I still didn't play music. I was recording some demos here and there, but I pretty much wrote music off. I was okay with never really being in a band anymore. It's kind of, I've, I did that. I was burnt out um, with Milk Toast. Prior to that, I was managing it. I was booking it. I was doing all of those things for this band. I was managing the tours that we were on um, mm -hmm. and starving all the meantime. Like classic, you know, story. And then I got into a position where um, I was going to lose some street cred. I wasn't struggling anymore. Um, at all. And, uh, but Brenda, um, was really harping. There's some just other business ventures I was, um, after, but she kept harping on it. She's like, you really need to, to, to do this again. And I was adamantly against it. Five years adamantly against it. So finally she, I don't know what the conversation was. She's like, you should just, we're doing great. Why don't you do that? And with the idea of, all right, so I've got to find members of a band that not only, because talent's everywhere, um, but to get, you know, five other people that all get along, all jive. I hate this word, but it's appropriate to find, to have synergy, um, to, to like the music, like what I've written before and learn that music. And now, of course, I had resources to uh, bring the band to a, a new level. And I was so blessed to meet uh, these people who loved the music, wanted to play the music. Um, I was able to you know, financially bring us to the next level. Um, we weren't, I'm, by no stretch of the imagination, scraping by anymore. They look these, like they these, have a sense of humor too. They're, un they're not only they're unbelievable musicians, we are extraordinarily close. Um, we spend a lot of time outside of the studio and rehearsal space. So, um, yeah, you, that's, you, uh, you blew my mind, James, because you waited another 10 years. <laughs> it's like every 10 years, James McAndrew shows up in my life and you tracked me down and you told me about your band because I you know sometimes you can't find things by accident you just basically someone has to tell you and you sent me you told me about your video and I watched it and I was like I can't believe it he, he he's de he's doing it man and I was so proud of you man because I know how much shit that you went through and like I was so happy to hear from you you know yeah, I mean, that was, there, was, there was only one way I was ever going to do it again. Um, and that was, I, I'll put this in quotes, I guess, the right way with resources. And, you know, you, you, treat, you treat this stuff, I mean, there's no two ways about it. When you start a band and you're really giving us a shot, they're all startups. So you, I, I've treated this whole band as a startup at the end of the day in terms of, you know, what are the next steps? What do we need to do to get us <clears> to the next level and the next level and the next level? Um, and we need, you know, we need visual assets. We need, 
We need Spotify plays. We need you nailed it, dude. You, you know, nailed it. We need tours. We need this. We need that. We need things, and you really can't have those things with. I mean, unless you're going to excuse the term, unless you're going to shove a horseshoe up your ass <laughs> um, and, and pray that that works. And but I, I think that already happened, and I think I expensed the horseshoe that point so there's there's no question um, there was it never any question about your talent i'll tell you never and you know i knew that because i don't like to just attach myself to just imagine attaching yourself to everybody that you meet in the music business it's like a clusterfuck yeah. you know but with you i yeah. always knew that you were like a totally com- Everyone know that about True you, man. Musician. But, you know, you did battle some demons, man. I wasn't sure if I could bring this up or not, but you did. You you battled sure. some demons. I don't know if you want to talk about that or not, but... I don't, I don't mind. I mean, you had to overcome some kind of addiction kind of thing, too, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's you know, it's I'm, I'm not alone. There's a lot of folks... So it's not, yeah, you know, <laughs> not exactly you're not, a, uh, you're not alone. A, 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 a rarity of a, of an issue. Um, is this how you ended but, up living uh, yeah, in a no, Yaris? During the, specifically the end of the first iteration of that band, I was drinking hard, really bad. I was really struggling with it, struggling just to keep my, my <laughs> life normal. And, you know, to the point where, um, it wasn't that it itself ruined my life where I ended up living in a car as much as I couldn't get out of my own way to just get to the next step. So, and that, that was still a struggle off and on for even the all, all but 10 years that milk toast didn't exist, um, before I resurrected it, so to speak. Um, but even then it was still a situation. Um, uh, and I knew that, the only, I mean, out here in terms of any other um, professional um, you know, business dealings I have out here outside of that, there was no way that any of that was going to be successful whatsoever unless I just eliminated the, the, um, the guys that you're, all the bullshit. Yeah, the guys that you're playing with, you told me you met all, those guys aren't from Denver, most of them, right? Aren't they from other places? Yeah, we would get one, one guy's from upstate New York, the other one's from New Jersey, another one's from Florida, uh, one is from, actually, another one's from Manhattan himself, as a matter of fact, as well. You get the East and, Coast guys in Denver. And then, <laughs> and then well, that's the, and then one's from Seattle, or uh, Oregon, I think, so, Pacific Northwest, somewhere. I'm not sure where Ben's from. But yeah, mostly, mostly East Coast, which would explain the only... And perhaps there's this this inner bias of the only people I trust are certainly from the East Coast. Can Everyone from the West is always suspect. Can I? <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. Uh, I hope none of my West Coast. Once you're in the middle of the country, it doesn't matter if you're from Boston or Manhattan or, yeah, or right. Florida. But I'm hoping but, uh, that you probably more my people. I'm hoping that my West Coast listeners don't take that personally, but. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think Sibylle wants to ask you something. I have a, a couple questions. Um, one, when did this iteration of Milk Toast um, take hold? I started playing around with the uh, uh, 20, or 2019. Oh, wow. Okay, so this so is... Summer of 2019, I scooped these musicians together. Um and did did they all the come end. out to Denver at that point, or were you guys? They trying were to... all. Our, they were all here. Oh, okay, interesting. So it was it on. There was whatever you think about the powers that be. There, there's a there's there are things beyond my control. I'm not that good. The universe. That I just so happen to find these players who also are just great people. And I mean, this was, there's a, a couple of members that needed to move on. So those, those folks were replaced, but still like these, these guys are amazing. Yeah. You they're did just, good, man. They're you, just you... such a perfect fit in every way, shape and form that there's no way that I didn't have some kind of mystical help somewhere. 
I, I um, listen. I believe in the universe and whatever all that is, and positive affirmations. That's actually my life has turned around in the last two years from a from a you know a lot of tr- turmoil. But um, so I can totally relate. And I think when you use the word synergy, especially with within a band and within musicians, and my ex husband is a musician, and I love music, and Steve and I have. He's just discovered that his favorite fashion designer is really into music. Um, when he introduced me to your to your music and also to your video, because I mean, I, I you know I needed to figure out who you were and what you were about before I jumped on here. You loved it right away. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I was just I from from how the video was produced. The cinematography of it, if you will. I mean, I really appreciate when I see a band that has, quote unquote, synergy, when when you have a sense of style, when you have obviously the musical talent that you guys have. I mean, it all comes together and you're like, aha, they've got it. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, James, the video absolutely floored me when I saw it. And there's so many things we could talk about the video forever. There yes. was the one well, thing. Well, we've got two other ones as well. That yeah. One oh, was, yeah, I yeah, watched them all. We, we have an animation. and Yeah, I've seen the other ones too, but Cigarette Burns, I mean, it's just, it's like, I mean, that's one of the best videos I've seen in a while. You know what I really enjoyed about the video? And let's we, just talk about the fact that there's a lot of bad videos out there. Oh, okay? yeah. yeah. So, this like, is a great. This, this is, is a, a big really deal. <laughs> this is a big deal to have a good video. This Before you discuss fashion, which I know you wanted to talk about, the scene in the video, I like the whole thing, but I love when you guys are sitting at the table and you bring the fish out. And then everyone br- picks up their glass of wine except for you. And I noticed that and I was thinking... Interesting. I thought that was. I know this probably wasn't really wine in the glass, but I thought there was a message. <laughs> oh, there's, there's little hidden bits and pieces in there. Yeah, I picked up on that. The too. message, though, I cut the. There was a message. I got that yeah. message when I saw that. So, Sibylline, you uh, you love the way they dressed and everything. I know you've said that. Yeah, did someone I mean, style that? Did someone yeah, style who, you who, guys? Who worked? For, is that you? Is that you, That's James? Me. Is that you and your so secret the, passion for fashion? <laughs> we can really. I'll, I'll, I'll make this uh, so that we can segue right into that because there are a couple of points of that that video in particular. So Cassie Maya, um, out of L.A. By the way, she's actually well, she's Hawaiian, but so I have no, she followed us on Instagram for some reason, and, and Brenda just said, "Have you seen this one person out of?" thousands like yep that one i know exactly who you're talking about and just that's what she does she's she's mainly a film uh a filmmaker and she had another video that i absolutely and i i should be better about it i wasn't particularly a fan of the music not that it was good or bad it just wasn't my thing However, the cinematography and all the shots and the lighting was mm. brilliant mm-hmm. And uh, so she goes, okay, here's the storyline. Have you ever seen what we do in the shadows or whatever that that show is? I said, yeah. She's like, that's what I kind of see you as. And we're quirky, but there's not a lot about that that isn't pretty authentic. It's just so we're pretty much how odd we are. The but, dancing um, alone, you we guys dancing, together. <laughs> you know, the dancing just cracked so me I, up. <laughs> that was two takes. Wow, nice so work. She would give us direction. She'd go, do that. And we'd go, gladly. <laughs> Love it. And so we just, so that was mostly under her direction. And a lot of the props um, were mostly her. She would just go, hey, go out and get this thing uh, or these things and we'll figure it out. Um, so I rented that. That's a, a an older mansion. Denver. So the what's funny about that is the the uh, owner of the house lived in the basement or lives uh, in the basement. I thought I was renting this place, so the the crew stayed in that house the night before just to map out the shots, this that, and the other thing. 
um, we'll get into the fashion in just a sec. Um, I knew <laughs> no, exactly I love, how I wanted everybody I, to, to dress. Uh-huh. I love I knew the, what I color love the house, dress, I knew what the color palette was going to be in the whole thing. You're the, so you were the there. stylist. You're telling us that yeah. you were the stylist. Yeah, that's, I figured he was. Wow. Yeah. I'm impressed, um, James. That comes from the inside. Listen, you got you to dress like you're going to work. Did you like the scene in the video when he, like, Pushes his hair back. Oh, I, that I was love great. everything about it. I really James has funny. perfect hair, by the way. You have perfect and hair. And you're tall. <laughs> tall and handsome. Um, we started that video, and if you've ever been part of a music video, you hear that song all day long. So get ready for your ears to bleed. Yeah. You'll never want to hear this song again. Oh, right. So we do that first shot, and that first shot is all of us coming out of those. Love it. We So we all got dressed, ready to go. And all of a sudden, there's one door we couldn't open. It has a number three on it. There's a bang from inside the door. We're probably maybe, maybe 10 minutes into this. And it's someone living in the house. We had no idea this poor person is in there, not knowing that a music video is being shot in, in this house what? all day long. <laughs> I'm livid. And then Cassie, the director, goes, I'll take care of it. So the guy doesn't even come out of the door. She's just kind of talking him off a ledge, so to speak, outside of the door, and just to let him know, uh, yeah, this uh, we're going to be doing turn. this for about eight to ten hours. <laughs> what? So, that is so that crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So there's to to segue into the fashion aspect. There's a there's a place down the street from me, in kind of an older part of of Denver. This, um, it's a clothier, is what it is. Uh, this place has been there since the sixties, like Ted a- is, who still, still runs it, uh, old school, totally my style. Every time I go in there, I always want something bizarre, so, which is outside of their spectrum. It's not really, is it consign? I mean, is uh, it a vintage or is it, um, no, not at all. Oh, wow. Not at all. Cause this not is a, they, very they'll old make Hollywood custom look. things. Like I can pick out fabrics and they'll make a suit for instance. Wow. Or their they'll tailor whatever you invite. Nice. Oh, so, so they're they're bespoke. a little bit of everything. You can get bespoke from them. I, know. I don't know what that Without. word means, by the way. Well, let me in, let me uh, educate you, please. Yeah. Bespoke. Bespoke means when you go in and you select the fabric and you select the styling, and then they make it it's for what you do. your body and your measurements, <laughs> and it's designed by you. Oh, That's bespoke. a haberdasher of sorts. Uh-huh. Haggard Dasher? Haberdasher, yeah. <laughs> I we're knew talking I mean, I mean, my no, language yeah, now. I get to jump now, in here. Now you know, I, I knew you two would connect to <laughs> me. What, what, uh, ha- what? Forget it. I don't, uh, go ahead, continue, I James. I'm sorry. So it's, in, it's, it's uh, at any time we're as a group doing any one thing, uh, it's always hilarious. So we all just go into this place and, and these guys just set it up for us. And I just pick, this is what I think we should look like. And then it's, it's just done and they get, it's a laugh riot because we're, we are not a typical client of theirs in, in, in any way. So, um, of course, if I have to do something formal, I, I, I give all my business to this place because it's independent. It's been there for a million years. So basically like they custom into, made these suits. In time. They custom made these suits for you, the tuxes. Wow. They they fit it. They fit the suit. Okay, the, okay. These they were particular tuxes were out of right out of a catalog, and they they have some interesting <laughs> vendors. So, um, and then then he made me buy them. So, <laughs> oh well, of course. <laughs> uh, so, so he made the. So, you gotta support the small business owner. <laughs> that was it. He's like, they're, they'll be the same price if you buy them versus <laughs> renting them. I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna ever wear okay. them again. <laughs> oh, you better. You better. They're <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> Hey James, uh, hilarious. James, I think we could probably talk for hours, but I can't believe how fast the time just went by. And there's just a couple other things. I know you mentioned that you guys are tracking four new songs now. So, uh, and your your whole path is to re- release singles, pretty much, right? That is pretty much management's um, go to. Um, Eva, well, it's pretty much the standard of most most people that aren't you know, particularly well known, no one's really releasing entire albums. And, 
you know, I think I had said this to you before that it's, 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 it's kind of an interesting way to kind of force people to listen to all of the songs that are eventually going to be on one kind of compilation that we would otherwise call an album. Yeah, believe it or not, so, being old school as I am, I even understand this strategy because <laughs> I am old school. Yeah, and I think you need an album. But, you know, I get what you're doing, though, man. So these songs that you're working on, are you going to release them like every other month or something? Is that your plan? We're, we're releasing them every four to six weeks. So okay, yeah. We still have two more. We're releasing a song, She Says... Um, Friday, as a matter of fact. Oh. Uh, we have two more from our last session, including that one, while we're mixing and mastering these next four. So we're writing as we're releasing. And these will be, just, it's, these are all coming out on Spotify. Yeah. Great. Yep. Great. Well, that's so, something. Uh, Cigarette Burton's got a, quite a, quite a few oh, yeah. things on it, and Firing Squad came after that. Yeah, your numbers, you know, I'm, as you know, I come from the industry and I pay attention to numbers and your numbers are impressive. So I'm like, definitely. No, I'm, I'm all about analytics. <laughs> but, um, you know, I thanks a lot, man, for coming on the show. And um, well, thank you so much, Steve. It was a pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing where your journey goes because I'm going to be there with you, even though I'm from afar. I've always, you know what I think about you when I did this radio interview I think it was the last time we saw each other. I, this radio station here around here asked me to come on, and I called you and brought you up to the station with me. You remember that, right? It was. Uh, oh my God, do I? Absolutely. Yep. And we had a lot of fun that day. Probably a little too much fun, if I recall correctly. But <laughs> potential. But that, that's that's not out of the realm of of plausibility. But thank you for coming on the show and um, and, and and letting Sibylline and myself take you through this this whole fashion course and all this. And uh, yeah, know, and Sibylline and I will have to talk more about fashion. I um, would love that. Yeah, absolutely. As, as I move forward, please feel free. Um, well, if you ever need another stylist, I would love to help you on that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you'd, you'd be getting the best stylist around, by the way, if I could just add that to it. And, and Steve, thank you so much, and we'll keep it so that it's not another 10 years till I talk to you again. Absolutely, absolutely. But it looks like I'm back in the game. Thank you, and I wish Whether you all... I like it or not. Yeah, and I wish you all... You're staying in the game, dude. You are a true rock star. And, and, I, and you, you know, I love you, man, and I want the best for you. So good luck, and we'll thank be you. talking soon, brother. Absolutely. All right, you All right, take, take care. care. All right, Thank you so you. much. All right, later. Take care. Well, that was fun. <laughs> James, I knew you and James would get along really well. So listen, we're getting kind of short on time here, but I want you to do a total plug on your art gallery, all the dates, Violin Cat, the whole nine yards, the mic's yours. Oh, thank you so much, Steve. Um, well, uh, I just wanted to circle back, tell everybody that... Um, Sibylline, the art gallery, um, which is my, you know, rebirth, if you will, into the world of art and fashion and music and events and now doing it for myself. Um, we are located at 460 C Harrison Avenue, Boston, in um, the suite called C6. It's in the lower part of the um 460C building uh, in the vibrant, wonderful, contemporary art district of Boston. Um, and I am initially opening up this gallery um, in the hopes to get the world to realize what a phenomenal artist my father is, Jean Sariano. And he does like abstract art. because you we didn't abstract, yes. contemporary, colorful, whimsical. I mean... To see this stuff, his website is jeansariano.com. Plus Instagram you um, have too, And right? we have yeah. Instagram at jeansariano.com. That's J-E-A-N-S-A-R-I-A-N-O. And also we're on Facebook for Sibylline the Art Gallery. Um, but his work, basically, I've, I've, been, I've taken the last... Um, year and a half now to photograph over 600 paintings wow. that I've gone through so far. He's been painting since the 60s, right up through till 2019, 2020, no, 2019. And um, I mean, it's just unbelievable the breadth of work that he has. It's, like I said, colorful, um, 
totally, totally one of a kind. Um, and I'm just really excited to bring it into the world of the contemporary art market because it's really kind of untapped at this point. I still have easily 400 more paintings to even look at. Oh my God. So I haven't even crossed that bridge yet. But this is a, a big step, a big, a big, big moment for me um, to get back into the spotlight, if you will. Um, I spent the last eight years doing other stuff and being a mom. And here we go. You know, I'm really, really excited. It's um, it's all coming together. It's happened very fast. It's been since December and I'm opening in April. So. Well, I'm happy for you, and um, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll be at your soft opening uh, on April 2nd. And let and... me give some more dates, because you just okay, reminded me of that. Okay, so April 2nd through May 1st is our okay. first exhibit that will be Crowd Me, I'm Alone. I actually didn't even tell you. Crowd what Me, that... I'm Alone. Yeah, so the concept here is that we've all been secluded and isolated, and some people live alone, and some people live in a household full of people that they're sick of now. <laughs> um, and... Uh, you know, the dichotomy between the two, the juxtaposition between the introvert and the extrovert. And I picked paintings. There are two different series of my father's work, one that's I call It's Crowded and one that's called Alone Lonely. And there'll be this dichotomy of the two pieces hanging next to each other. Wow. Um, it's Sounds really cool. Fascinating. It's really cool. So then our our next first Friday will be the first Friday in May, but I'm actually thinking about maybe keeping this exhibit up a little bit longer. So let me not plug that okay. and go right into June 4th, 4th, which will be my grand opening. Official opening. That's going to be my big blast. You know, here we are, world. It is official. Um, Sibylline, the art gallery. And um, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just so going to plug Violin Cat again because yes, she's please. going to be performing on April 2nd at 12.30 to 3.30, something like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. She's really, uh, <laughs> you got, that's going to really add a little spice to everything. I it think. will. She's a violinist that plays both classical and pop and everything in between. And so I'm really excited. My dad is a huge, huge music. He's just got a love of music. So this is for him. It's not even for the audience that yeah. will enjoy her too but it's for my dad and then I also want to say that my dear friend Mark Femino um, has agreed to come play that evening so he'll oh, be playing nice. from 5 to 9 ish you know you know, in and out and he's just going to play acoustic guitar and he's got a new album out too Femme La Bouche see you Femme don't need me to book your acts for you you can just book your own acts well you're going to book them <laughs> but I, he's a good friend of mine so, but Kat is I'm so excited to meet her and have her, have her, you know, well, playing, doing her thing. Well, thank you again. And once again, thanks to James McAndrew. And um, before of we... Of Milk Toast. Of Milk Toast the and fashion, Company. Milk Toast and Company. Milk Toast. Yeah, check out that video for Cigarette Burns. It's on YouTube. It's really fantastic. I highly recommend it. Um, if you want to support... And the, song. Yes. If you want if you want to support the podcast, we have a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash twisted Rico, where you can support the show for only a dollar a month. And you can reach me at twistedrico at gmail.com, at twisted Rico on Instagram, also at blowing smoke with TR on Instagram. There's also a Facebook and Twitter page. Thank you to Nick Z here at New Alliance East in Somerville, Mass., for doing another unbelievable job. Till the next time we say goodbye, this is Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico. I'm your host, Steve Ricardo. Keep the rock and roll alive. Yes, 
we do love Busy Phillips because people are asking me why I haven't mentioned that. Well, it's kind of cool that we have a... Well, Busy's almost as attractive as Sibylline. <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>